Hello again lovely people, I'm back with another video concerning uh, Slanesh and the new releases coming for AOS. So today now we're going over the endless spells. But before we do that I just want to say thank you to everyone that's watched the other videos. It has meant a lot that you've tuned in and watched them. And yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. It's, I, I just want to say thank you. It's so appreciated that people are listening in and enjoying the content. I just want to say thank you. Before we do anything, I just want to say thank you. So, like I said, today we're going over the end of spells. So without further ado, we shall begin. Right then guys, here's the picture that we've all seen of the Endless Spells. Personally, I think these are fantastic as models themselves. It's, some, it's something about them that, you know, just draws your eye, and I don't mean it's just the paint painted on it. It is really good, but the models themselves have got so much detail in them. It's amazing. So, um, we've got the wheels of excruciation. We've got the mesmerizing mirror and the dreadful visage. Three good spells, very slanesh-y. And we're going to go over them. We're going to go, go from left to right. And we're just going to break them down. And now we'll see which ones we like and which ones we don't like. And which ones we think we're going to see more of in the future. Right then guys, we're kicking off with the Wheels of Excruciation. Uh, the, the wheels are a predatory endless spell that can move up to 12 inches and can fly. So they can go wherever they want on the uh, on the battlefield when they're summoned. And to summon them, you need a casting value of 5 or more. Uh, and it's only Slaneshi Wizards can attempt to cast a spell. Uh, you set up the wheel within six inches of the caster wholly within six inches so it's the basic basic level of endless spells setup on here so i think on a five that's quite easy to get on the pit on the pitch on the battlefield sorry not pitch right this is aos not blood bowl so this is probably one we're gonna see i think a bit regular cause of how easy it is to get on the on the uh, on the battlefield but the abilities swirling death when this model is set up the player who can who can uh, who called it can immediately make a move well I was really struggling with my words up and then it's the exquisite agony after this model has moved to six dice for each unit that the model has passed across that unit suffers one mortal wound each time the role is less than the unit and modified save characteristic. So the chaff of your army, the ones that you're normally going to say is like 5 plus, possibly 4 plus, you're going to target mostly with this. So this is going to take out the the bulk of your army. Well, I say take out bulk, it's going to hopefully whittle them down so numbers don't matter so say you've got your your blood letters and you've got a full you've got a full unit so where they would get the bonus for being say 20 or more um you can whittle it down so when they do attack they and say you can get them under you can get them un, under the 20 or say if, if you're lucky uh yeah you get them under 20 they've taken away the bonus for the hit in so you know it's always good it's I, I think there's going to be certain armies which you're not going to want to feel this against because I would say a 3 plus armor is going to be very hard to get under unless you're very good at rolling ones then by all means go after whoever you want but 
this is your herd thinner I would say but am I looking at it wrong there is a comment section down below and you can use it wisely to tell me if I'm wrong or if you agree or if you think this is going to be utterly pointless but it just looks nice right let's follow that up now with the mesmerizing mirror it's the one that looks like a massive you know a massive mirror that uh, most girls will have in a handbag but held by some horrible claw of some slaneshi demon whore it's pretty nicely like a demon whore right anyway uh it's a predatory predatory endless spell so you can move up to six inches and can fly same as the other one so it surprised me really i wouldn't think i would have thought it was predatory but there you go what do i know i'm not a creator right to summon it you need cast a value of six so you know it's, a, it's the same as the uh the other one i think you know that's relatively easy to do on two dice so i think we can see this as well and was it uh wizards can only attempt to cast a spell as as per any other endless spell if successful set up the mesmerizing mirror wholly within 18 inches of the caster so yeah that's 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 nice 18 inches that's a nice big bubble flit right and through the magic of editing you miss the uh, tea break but we're going to go on to the abilities now so we got the irresistible lure if the unit if the unit starts a move within 12 inches of this model it suffers d3 mortal wounds unless it finishes the move closer to this model than it was before um, this ability has no effect on slanesh units so with that 18 inches you could put it right out into the field knowing that you were you know you, well you could even put it behind units knowing that uh, uh, they want to try and move away from it because you want it because they want to come and attack you so you can put it right into a gap knowing that they want to move away so it, it gives them a choice and do they take the hit or do they move it back and forego like a charge on a unit or something like that so I think that's nice because you, you're giving them the option can they take the hit knowing it's gonna you know weaken them on it on the charge or do they move away try and get rid of it ready for the next turn I, I think that's a nice little spe I think that's a nice little rule he's not into the abyss after this model is set up and after the model has moved roll six dice for each hero within six inches of this mo model roll separately for uh, for each hero for each six the hero suffers a number of mortal wounds equal to the number of sixes that were rolled for that hero for example if you roll one six for a hero that hero suffers one mortal wound if you roll two it's uh, four and so on and so forth it has no effect on slaneshi heroes so there you go guys it's able to deal out mortal wounds if you're lucky to roll sixes but i don't think that is the main ability that you're going to use it for that's going to be a secondary because i think it's the lure that you're going to use it for more than anything like i said i would use that to try and stop certain units advancing but again i'm probably looking at it a bit too basic and the other one is just nice if you can roll a six because six is you know they, they are hard road i'm not going to say you're not going to get them but it's not something you build around right then guys we're on to the third and final one which is the dreadful visage which i'm going to be honest it's my favorite one out of the lot and we're going to have a look at the uh, war scroll now and you're going to find out why right it's a predatory uh, spell and you can move up to eight inches and can fly when it is summoned so all of them are predatory spe spells all of them can fly so you know i think i, I think that's the basic 
across the board. Um, the summon it is a casting value of seven, so it's going to be a little bit harder, I would say, to get this one off. But I think this is so worth it. And when you set it up, it's going to be within twelve inches of the caster, and that's wholly within twelve inches of the caster. So it hasn't got the range of the mirror, but it's not used in the same way as the mirror, so it doesn't really matter so much. So we're going to go into the abilities now. So we got the swooping horror. With this model is set up, the player who can set up a comedic move. If so that's just the basic movement. Flinzing tongue. After this model has moved, roll six dice. Uh, roll this six dice for the closest other unit within six inches. If more than one other unit is, is equally close, the player that move that can choose which unit. Um, the unit suffers one mortal wound for each roll of a four plus. So, so I would say you're probably averaging two, possibly three mortal wounds a time for this thing, which is, you know, that's pretty good. That's two more, two or three mortal wounds that you just you can pick who it goes against. The only thing is it doesn't say. En it doesn't. It doesn't say. Uh, enemy units. It says other unit. So perhaps I'm being a little bit too much. Uh, rules as written, not rules as intended. But it seems like if you were, if you, uh, towards the back, with your uh, wizard and you've cast it and you put it out that twelve. If you were unfortunate to have your unit. Um, close by uh it yeah you got you gotta see the hit which it doesn't say slanesh units are you know not affected it doesn't say just enemy units only it just said other unit so it's it's you know it's a double edged sword basically it's placement is key so um am i looking at that wrong am i reading too much into the wording let me know in the comments down below or if you agree just yeah again let me know right then guys we're going on to the last ability and it's called terrifying entity and all this is is if you've got units within 12 inches of this model enemy units that are not slaneshi have one minus uh the one minus bravery and Slaneshi units have a plus one so it's not only is it dealing out mortal wounds it's giving you a bravery buff which sometimes is needed in sticky situations so I know it's got two uses and I like that it seems to be um, one to control the masses but yeah it's I like it because it's chaotic just by reading the rules as written. If I'm wrong, please let me know and you know, educate me, like I always say. Right guys, I know that I said this is gonna be a endless spells episode, but because it's been a bit shorter than the other ones, I thought I'd throw in the uh, the scenery piece as well. And I will say, I have mentioned in the past before, I have a problem with army specific scenery well some of them some of them make sense some of them don't and I've gone over that in the past and if you've missed it it's I think some of the scenery even though it does look good doesn't actually make sense because take for instance the dwarven uh, pizza oven it's I know it's a nice nice uh, bit of scenery it, you know, it's a big massive forge, so it's part of the aesthetic for Fire Slayers. But who's going to carry that out into battle and then set it up? Nobody. It's the same as I say with uh, the Corn Skull altar. It looks amazing. It, it, you know, 
it is good. It's got the, the corn bunny ears and everything. It's very very corn. But if they're a marauding band, whenever they got time to set up something like that, it doesn't make sense. But this is something I can see making sense, and it's you know it's how GW have set it up in the pictures. It does kind of make sense where it, it looks like they've sacked a temple, or desecrated it, and have built this bit of scenery called the Fane of Slanesh. So. I know I've digressed a little bit now, but we're going to go on to the War Scroll for it. Right then guys, and here's the War Scroll for the Fane of Slanesh. And once you've read these rules, I hope GW have got a lot of these models ready for the pre-order week. And not as soon, there's only going to be a certain amount of people wanting these, because I think everyone who's going to be collecting Slanesh for Age of Sigma is going to want one of these. Because no matter what horse do you take this is needed in your army this is free it is essential i would say if you're going down the depravity points part of it and like i've said before it's a good looking bit of scenery i i, I like it that's something you that's something you could put on a board and you can build a story around it like i said you could you could build a story around pe they've come out to and desecrated a temple to friggin sigma or whatever and the stormcaster coming in to get them or they've taken over a forge and they've you know desecrated every dwarven mother there so before i start going off on one again uh scenery rules the power of Slanesh. Uh, if you spend depravity points to summon a unit on the battlefield, and that unit is set up wholly within 12 inches of this terrain feature, you receive D3 depravity points after that unit has been set up. So you get a bit of a rebate on uh, on your depravity points. So depending on what the uh, depending on what the uh, table looks like, you could be churning out um, fast moving units uh, like the Seekers so you know you could if say uh, on like the God Seekers and you want that fast moving charging unit just summon them close to this and you're always getting your points back so you're never going to run out basically that is number one why I think this is going to be needed in every army but I digress and we're going to go on to, you know, ability number two. And that ability is Damned Conduit. And let's have a read of the ability. Uh, pick a Slanesh hero within six inches of this terrain feature to make a sacrifice. Uh, if you do so, that hero suffers one mortal wound and you must roll a dice. On a one, nothing happens. So you've just taken a mortal wound and nothing happens. On a 2+, plus, you can re-roll hit rolls for attacks made by that hero until your next hero phase. So if you've got a nice choppy lord, or you've got to keep your secrets and close by, a little uh, cut on the wrist, and you can re-roll without needing command points. I think, I think that's a nice extra rule. I would take this myself for the depravity points uh, rebate but yeah that's a nice little buff for an assaulty hero if they are within six inches if they're outside of six inches um tough shit but that's not all if that hero has an artifact of power they can sacrifice that instead of suffering one mortal wound if they do so, that artifact of power can no longer be used. Uh, if a weapon of power can no longer, um, if a weapon was picked when the artifact of power was selected, the weapon reverts to normal. However, on a two plus, that he that hero can re-roll attacks uh, for the rest of the battle instead instead of the phase. So, if you've picked up an artifact and it's 
you finding that it's in a situation where you can't use it or it's ineffective you can offer it up and on a 2 plus you could change that to a whole game buff to me this is an amazing piece of scenery like I said it one it makes sense to have it there if you're a Slaanesh army because it doesn't seem to be awfully big or out of place if like say they were to create it two the rules are fantastic and like I said this is essential really for your army so if you're relying on depravity points which I probably probably would be if I was making it well if I was making it soon it would be depravity points heavy and yeah this this thing will be a must so yeah um, I can't say enough about this model or this scenery model I should say this scenery model is fantastic and yeah it's, it's scratching the slanesh itch it's uh, you know the army to be built I you know it's, it's giving me that excitement and I've got to try and finish one before I can get the other one done but yeah this is fantastic and I well I hope you guys uh, are looking forward to these pre uh, pre releases and these orders and I, I just hope this is everything that you want because to me what they've shown so far has been worth the wait to get get in the uh, battle tome because Slanesh has stepped into the game now and he, he's very big time and it's just amazing to see what they've done and how they've turned it from law into rules as well so yeah I think that I think Slanesh with these rules are going to be part of the big leagues when they're released and that's it guys and gals that's another video over and I hope you've enjoyed it I hope uh, these videos have helped you get excited for the run up to the uh, pre-order Saturday so yeah I personally after seeing what seeing this through the week I think Sl Slanesh are going to be hitting the tables hard and fast and very inappropriately because that is the Slanesh way and I, I, it just gets me so excited to see fantastic models and to see that they haven't wasted the rules on them to, sh to show how good they are they've, they've made these ex exquisite rules on them so yeah I just want to say thank you again for putting up with me this week I know it's only been three videos but I know I probably haven't got the uh, the accent to keep everyone uh, interested but yeah um, it's just been a pleasure going over this and talking to you guys so um, as I always say we've got um, we've got an email account if you want to get in contact with the show um, we've got a teespring account if you want to get your noob gear on and that's teespring and then it's noob with the brush that's a little storefront and new designs are coming up i have promised and that will be sorted and we've got a paypal link that's down the bottom um i've got rid of the patron so if you see that link don't click it and yeah that's it and i just want to say thank you again for sharing out the video guys and if you are a, uh, a viewer but you're not a subscriber please subscribe if aos and blood bowl is your thing i know it's not for everyone's taste but we're trying to uh you know we're trying we're trying to uh set our own groove with those two games so until the next video everybody, I hope you have a lovely time and I shall see you again.